Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll start in five minutes. We're just waiting for more people, people to join the webinar.
Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the webinar today under the title PVT Critical Role in Field Development Planning. This webinar will be delivered by Engineer Mohammed Amin. So, just a brief intro about Engineer Mohammed. He's a senior reservoir engineer in General Petroleum Company, Egypt. He has more than six years' experience in two asset evaluation, reservoir characterization, and simulation. He participated in and recently managed many successful field development plans in green and brown fields within offshore GOS area. Jim Mohammed has the correlation that holds his name in field of reservoir fluid flow modeling. He also holds a bachelor's and master's degree in petroleum engineering from Suez University in Egypt, and he has many publications into several journals and conferences like MPM, JRTE, SPWLA, and PNC. So before we start with the webinar, I just have a very short presentation that I will deliver. Uh, it's about our upcoming courses. So I'm Omar Hamid, business developer at OPA. So just a few minutes in this presentation, then we can start the webinar. Uh, our uh, first offer for uh, the upcoming courses is the recorded courses. Uh, so we have nine courses right now offered. Uh, the prices that you see on the left side are the original prices before discount, but you will see the discount the next slide. So each one of these uh, courses is between 15 and 20 hours of recordings per course. There is exercises and assignments. And you will get support from instructors when you have any questions or you want any explanation about the, the course or certain topic in it. There will be a certificate, certificate of completion after you submit all the assignments in the course that you take. So uh, those prices that you see now, uh, they are uh, applied to the discount rates uh, in this slide. So depending on the number of courses that you take, uh, you get more discount rate. So if you take all the courses, for example, you will take 50% discount. So uh, if you're interested to take one or more courses from those recorded uh, courses with OPA, you can uh, register through this link by uh, scanning the QR code or by filling in the uh, form that my colleague will send in the chat right now. So you can uh, fill it in. Uh, I will give a few minutes to a few seconds to people to uh, register if they want to. And also, if you want to register after the webinar, uh, you can do it. You can go to our social media. We'll see the offer there. And you can click on the link and uh, register from our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Or also you can contact us on WhatsApp and uh, we will provide you with all the information about the recorded courses or any other uh, questions that you have. So uh, next slide is our uh, upcoming live course, which will take place on uh, 14th of August for three weeks. So it will be two weeks of course and one week of project. It will be between 35 and 40 hours of live training. In the course, you will have three hours per day for 10 days. And in the project days, you will have one to two hours per day for five days where you will work on uh, extra real data and assignments and projects uh, to practice what you got in the first 10 days. There will be, uh, as we said, real case studies and full support from the instructor to answer all your questions inside and outside the sessions. And of course, you will get a certificate uh, after completing this course, which will strengthen your CV and uh, make you uh, a professional in the topic that will be delivered about PVT analysis. Uh, the, there is an early bird offer right now if you register before 9th of uh, July. So you can pay $209.99 instead of $300, which is 30% discount. So don't, don't miss this uh, big discount because it will be the lowest possible uh, price to enroll in this course. You can also scan this uh, code to register in the course, or also you can uh, press on the link that my colleague will send right now in the chat. Or as I said, also you can go to our social media and register from there after the web. Okay, so, and finally, how to become an ambassador with OPA. It's very simple. You can take a course with OPA, whether it's recorded or live course, and you will get uh, many benefits out of it after you finish the first course with us. You will have discounts on all the courses in the future. You will get a group discounts and you get your friends with you. 
So join our happy uh, ambassadors and uh, join the courses that we are offering. Uh, we're also delivering uh, two upcoming new services. With the first one is called 4x4. It's a capsulated short course with low price. It will be composed of uh, four sessions. Each one is one hour for four consecutive days about a certain topic. And after it, you will get a certificate of completion for this uh, capsulated short course 4x4. And it will be for very low price that we will announce very soon on our social media. So stay tuned about this service. Also, our uh, second service is CV writing, checking, resume, uh, checking. Also, if you have uh, we need or you have any help uh, in the writing of uh, CV, resume, cover letter, we can also help you to uh, write a strong one. And uh, if you have already one, we can help you to enhance uh, the existing one. And also it will be for uh, a very low amount uh, compared to our uh, competitors in this, in this domain. So at the end, what are the rules for this webinar? So please keep your microphone muted and camera closed. Put your questions in the chat box. And they will be answered at the end of the uh, webinar. Use your full name as written in the registration form in order to be able to take attendance for you. And you can get the certificate after that. And uh, final note, the certificates will be sent within one week from today. So don't worry if it's if you don't receive it uh, in the next uh, three or four days. We did, we did not uh, forget you. We will send it as soon as it is ready. And thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Now uh, I give the stage to Jir Mohammed to start his webinar. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session of OBA. We will talk in this session about the BVD role into the field development plan. So our agenda of today, we will talk about the definition for the BVD, also the definition for the field development plan. After that, we will discuss about the role of BVD into designing the field development plan. And also, we will tell some cases about, uh, about some fields that uh, the BVT wasn't rolled into the, BV, the field development plan. First, the definition for the BVT. BVT stands for B pressure, V for volume, and T for temperature. So the BVD study is concerned about the volumetric behavior for the sample from our reservoir. Then we want to study the volumetric behavior of that sample under certain temperature and pressure. So because most of the applications of reservoir engineering uh, has a constant temperature, so all our, or every or the most of the experiments of the BVT studies are performed on in thermal conditions. So the temperature is constant for almost all the BVT experiments. For the studies that are made into the lab, we have about two types for the BVT studies. We have the routine studies that routinely made for every field that we are planning to develop. We have the compositional analysis, the constant uh, constant uh, mass expansion, the differential liberation, and also the constant volume depletion and separator test. Some of these experiments are made for uh, some certain of uh, reservoir fluids like the CVD. The CVD is done for the gas condensate reservoirs and also the volatile oil uh, reservoir. For the measurements that we are taking from these experiments, we are measured the formation volume factor, which is the relation between the volume on the surface conditions, on the standard conditions, and the volume into the pressure and temperature of our reservoir. The RS, which is the dissolved or the amount of gas dissolved into the oil under certain pressure and temperature. The bubble point and the dew point are the saturation pressures 
for oil or gas reservoir. Liquid dropout is the property that the amount or the percentage of the liquid or the condensate that is dropping from the gas condensate reservoir sample with depletion or with the pressure decrease. After doing this protein studies, we have another special studies. So this is this special studies are made from certain from certain applications like EUR uh, or steam injection uh, or CO2 storage or CO2 injection like swill test slim tube and SARA analysis. The SARA analysis is type of analysis that is made for heavy oil. Its goal is that to uh, to determine the conditions where the asphaltene and the resins and aromatics and the other components for the reservoir fluid is not stable. So it is a study that targeting from some flow assurance aspects. For the, the field development plan, a summary, the field development plan is that we are planning what we will do for our field. For example, for example, the project ex ex uh, economics. The project economics will study how we will, how we will finance our project. Is it uh, uh, like uh, an option for taking a loan from a bank, uh, or it will be self self financing that the company will pay for the activities that will be taken into this field. Also, the project construction like the construction for facilities. We have a production facilities for every field like separators and the tanks and these other facilities. Okay, so how we will construct these facilities and what, are, what is the design for these facilities. Also, we, we, uh, we must have a pipeline that will transfer the reservoir fluid from the wheels to the tanks. Also for offshore fields, we have facilities like platforms or uh, some mobiles or, uh, or this construction into the marine that will, uh, that will allow us to put our, wheel, our wheels on protection or drill a new wheel. Also we have the drilling activity. The field development plan will discuss the drilling activity, like some aspects like number of wheels that will be drilled, the wheel placement, what, uh, what about the, the, the distance between wheels? The design for these wheels, it will be deviated or just vertical wheels. Also, the wheel spacing. For the production, uh, the production uh, will discuss about it, will be discussed about it, uh, the development phases. We have about three phases for the development of any, uh, of any, uh, of any field. First, the exploration, then it came to the uh, exploration and the appraisal, then the development, then the mature development for the field. So in each phase, what are the recovery, the recovery mechanisms will be applied, like the water injection for secondary, secondary drive, uh, or EUR, like polymer flooding and water flooding, and uh, all these mechanisms that will be applied into the development of several development phases for our project. Also, what is the expected performance for our uh, for our field? What is the plateau rate? What is the, the decline rate for the production into the mature phase for our field? Also, it will talk about the design for the facilities and some other aspects that uh, concern it for the field development plan. So, for the development plan, we have a tight relation for the BVD. We have several applications that are dependent on our knowledge for the BVD properties for our reservoir fluid. First, we wanted to know the type for uh, the reservoir fluid. We have a pilot, we have essential five reservoir fluid pipes. We have the black oil, we have the volatile oil, we have the red gas and gas condensate and dry gas. The main, the main differences between these five reservoir fluids are the amount or the ratio for the gas to oil. 
uh, that represented by the DOR and the CGR. Also, also the main difference between the oil reservoir and the gas reservoir uh, is the temperature of reservoir. Is it below or higher than the critical, the critical temperature for the reservoir composition? Like we have into this graph, we have the phase block. The phase block is representing to the, uh, the saturation pressure versus the temperature. We have here, we have here the gas condensate and the gas reservoirs. We have here the oil reservoirs. When you are far from the critical point, so we can expect that we have a black oil. If you are near from the critical point, so we can expect that we will have volatile volumetric behavior. The gas condensate and the gas reservoir, the reservoir temperature is it, higher than the critical point, okay? So what are the difference between the black oil and the volatile oil? The difference between the two, the two types of oil reservoir in that if we have if we have no condensate, if we have uh, no condensate separated from the gas after it passing from the separator, so we can call it a black oil. For example, for example, for example, if we have our wheel here, then the, the oil will come from the wheel with the heater and then to the separator. The separator will separate the flow to gas and oil. The oil will be stored into the oil tank and gas will be uh, will go to the flaring system or a gas tank. So if this gas, if this gas have, if, if this gas, some condensate are separated again from this gas, so we can call it in this case as volatile oil. Volatile oil. If this gas after separation, no condensate separated from it. So we can call the oil reservoir in this case as black oil. So the black oil, the black oil, the gas separated from the gas, the, the black oil is dry gas. But the gas separated from the volatile oil will condense, will condensate some condensate or some oil after its separation from the primary separation. So for volatile oil, for volatile oil, we need additional separation stage. We, we need additional separation stage. We don't, uh, we have to, uh, the primary, we have to get a primary separator to separate the oil from the gas, then another separator to separate the condensate from the initially separated gas. For the gas reservoirs, we have three types for gas reservoirs. We have the dry gas, we have the gas condensate or wet gas. So on the surface, on the surface, if we have no condensate separated from the gas, so we can call it as dry gas. From its name, it is dry with no oil, okay? But if we have a condensate separated from the produced gas, we can call, in this case, we can call the reservoir fluid as wet gas or gas condensate. So at this stage, we wanted to differentiate between the wet gas and the gas condensate. This table, this table can, uh, can help us to differentiate between the wet gas and the gas condensate. By having the initial GOR, the initial GOR. So when we produce our will, we should measure the GOR. If the GOR range from about 3,000 and uh, 3,000 and a half to about 30,000. So we can call in this case, the reservoir fluid to be gas condensate. But if the DOR is higher than, is higher than 30,000, so we can call the reservoir fluid to be with gas, with gas, okay? Also, also from the composition, from the composition for the gas. If we measure the, if we have a compositional, a compositional analysis for, the reservoir fluid, if we have the C7 plus, the C7 plus, or the heptan plus, if we have heptan plus, 
range from one to six percent, so we can call it as gas condensing. If we have the heptan plus uh, its percent between zero and one, or uh, we have we have nearly no heptan plus, so we can call it into this case as wet and dry gas. Okay. Also, the CGR, the CGR is the measurement for the amount of uh, oil that is separated from the gas. If we had the CGR range from about 50 to 300, so we can call it as gas condensate. If we have the CGR range from zero to about 50, so we can call it as wet or dry gas, okay? But we should mention that, we should mention that these ranges are not strictly applied, but not, are not strictly applied, but it is some, it is just a range, just a range. So we should judge by using several, by using several aspects from this table, okay? We have also this table to that differentiate between the several types from oil reservoirs and the types for gas reservoir. We have the C7 plus for gas for oil, a plus uh, 50 for the heavy oil and tars. Also the black oil, we have about 35 to 50%, the hepton plus and volatile oil from about 10 to 30 percent. Also the GUR, if we have from zero to 200, we can consider it as heavy oil. If we have 200 to about 900, so we can call it as black oil, the volatile range, the volatile oil range for the GUR, it comes from about 900 to 30, uh, uh, 3.5 thousand GUR. Uh, above that, above that, we can consider it as gas condensate or wet gas. So the first application for the BVT is to type, is to type our reservoir fluid. We should know, we should know the type for reservoir fluid before going in progress into the field development plan, because because several aspects for the field development plan are dependent on the type for the reservoir fluid. For example, the production facilities. The production facilities for the volatile oil will be different, will be different from the production facilities from the gas condensate. The gas condensate will require that we have a gas plant that can, that can separate the gas plant products like the LPG and other factors, uh, propane and the other components from the dry gas to be processed as LPG that will have a higher price and will have an effect on the project economics, okay? The next application, the next application after, after we know the fluid type, we should evaluate the uh, project. We, we should evaluate the potential existing into this field. The first, the first impression the first calculation to be made for our field is to know the amount of oil originally in place or the amount of gas that existing originally in place, the oil in place and the original gas in place. By using the famous equation, the famous equation for the gas in place and the oil in place. We can, we can notice that in the two equations, we have we have two aspects from the BVT study. We have the formation volume factor for gas into the equation for the gas in place, and we have also the formation volume factor for oil from the original oil in place. So, if we have some errors, if we have some errors into the two factors, so we will have agreed errors into the original oil in place and very, very, very different calculation from the gas in place. Because the differences into the beta G or the gas formation volume factor will be as 10th magnitude. For example, for example, if the real or the actual gas, the formation volume factor will be about uh, 0.005 and 
we consider it or we assume it as 0 0.0005. So the gas in place will be multiplied by 10, by 10. So determining the gas formation volume factor is a great, a great, it has a great importance into determining the gas in place. Also, so if we don't suppose that we don't have a BBT study, like we have a new field without any BBT sample. So, so traditionally we will assume it. So, but this assumption, if we don't, if we don't eat accurately, so we will have a catastrophe. We have a great risk. For example, if we have a field, if we have a field that has this hydrocarbon pool volume, and we used we used an assumption for the beta O as 1.01. And but the correct the correct beta O is about 1.3. So the difference in the stoip is about 22% difference into the stoip. If we reflect this number into money, like revenue, uh, if we assume that the price for the oil barrel is about 60, 60 dollar per barrel, so in case if we have a stoip, a stoip of one, so we will have about 60, 60 million of dollar. But in case if we have point, uh, if we have the formation volume factor for oil 1.3, so we, this number will be reduced to about 46 million dollars. The difference will be about 13 million dollars. That is a big difference. So suppose we have, we, we, we are made our field development plan using this number. So we will make our investment based on a greater number or a greater revenue so we can have some risk into investing into this field. So, but for new fields, we can estimate the existing original hydrocarbon in place by using some ranges, by using some ranges for uh, the beta O or the beta G. Like, like if we have the reciprocal for the beta O and and convert this unit of reservoir barrel to acre foot, to acre foot. So we will have the original oil in place and the original gas in place, the amount of them per acre, per acre feet. So these numbers, these numbers for the original oil in place and the original gas in place per acre feet. Also, the pricing for these products for the oil and gas, it will be dependent on the BVT effects. For example, the oils that have a high EBI ranges from 40 to 45, it is the uh, it is the uh, it, it will it will be having the highest prices for crude oil. Above the 45, the uh, the heat content for the oil will be lesser because the change of the hydrocarbon chains will be shorter and less value. For gas, it's, it's uh, economic, it's a price, will, de will depend on its heat content or the British, uh, that measured by the British thermal unit. Like for uh, this table, we have the lean, rich, and the very rich gas streams. We have the ranges for every kind of uh, gas. Also the amount of sulfur and salts existing into these streams of gas and oil will affect its price. The third aspect for the field development plan, it, it will be the expected production performance. It will be the expected production performance. For the black oil, we can expect that that you are first. It will be constant. It will be equal to the uh, dissolved RS, the sulfur gas or the associated gas. 
that is dissolved into the produced oil. Then after some point, when the free gas separated into the reservoir and its saturation reaches the critical gas saturation, so the GOR will jump until we have a depletion into the reservoir, so the GOR will go down again, okay? The, B, the ABI nearly, nearly, it will be constant, but in some cases, it will be lower, okay? Because all the light components uh, was produced into the early phases of development. For the volatile oil and the retrograde gas condensate, we will, the GOR, First, it will be it will be constant. It will be equal to the associated or the dissolved gas into the oil, and also the it will be uh, it will be equal to the amount of oil that is vaporized into the gas. Then the DOR will increase. Also, the EBI the EBI for the volatile oil and the retrograde gas condensate will increased will be increased by the sign. Because the molecular weight of the C7 plus will be lighter with time, because some of the condensate will be when uh, the thumb, some of the uh, the light components will go down into the condensate, and this condensate will be produced into the later life of the field. For the wet gas and right gas, the wet gas the GOR will be constant. Why? Because the wet gas will be still, will be for the whole life of the reservoir, will be single phase into the reservoir conditions. Okay. If we have this example, if we have a well that producing with GOR about two, uh, 23,000, so we can expect that it is a gas reservoir. But we have some phenomena. Originally, the EBI was about uh, is uh, is 54, then increased to 59, uh, 58, then increased to 58. So, based on this graph, we can consider it as retrograde gas condensate. Also, the fourth aspect for the field development plan it is about the recovery process. The recovery process, which has uh, primary, primary phase and secondary phase, and the enhanced oil recovery. Example for the black oil reservoir, we can expect that we will have the viscosity range from moderate to high viscosity. So, so because the viscosity from moderate to high, so we can expect that the will one won't be able to drain the oil from high distance. The drainage radius for every well won't be a high distance. So it, it is should be it should be considered into the well spacing design and also the field development plan. Also the target production rate, the target production rate, because the black oil in case of having black oil reservoir, the bubble point will be far, will be far from the initial reservoir pressure. So in this case, in this case, we can we can drain or produce from this reservoir at the highest rate or at the capacity from the production facilities because we don't have any constraint from. Uh, from having a free gas into the production because the bubble point is very far from the initial reservoir pressure. But the main concern, the main concern in this case is for the water cooling. Why? Because we mentioned that the viscosity in case of black oil reservoir will be from moderate to high number. So because the mobility ratio the high mobility ratio be between the oil and water. So we can we can have some concerns about the water pouring into the wells. Also, if we are designing a water flooding into the black oil reservoir, we should consider the mobility ratio. We can add some polymer to have lesser mobility ratio and having 
a good or better sweeping efficiency. The other option, the other option, instead of water flooding, it is the infill drilling. The infill drilling is that we can drill some wells in the distance between the initial wells. So these wells will target the oil that that uh, that isn't produced from the initial wells because we mentioned that because the moderate to high viscosity because of the moderate to high viscosity of the black oil reservoir, so the well won't drain a great distance or the drainage radius for the wells won't be a high distance. So at the later life of the reservoir, we can drill some additional wells to produce this unswept oil spots. For the volatile oil reservoir, the, we can expect that the bubble point is very near to the initial reservoir pressure. So if we produce the reservoir with the highest rate, with the highest rate, so a free gas will be separated into the reservoir and that will cause some production problems. Also because the bubble point, the bubble point is near to the initial reservoir pressure. So the pressure maintenance, a pressure maintenance project should be applied as soon as possible. Why? Because if we waited some time, a free gas will be separated into the reservoir. And when we apply the pressure maintenance project, this water volume that will be injected into the pressure maintenance project will be used to just compress to just to compress this free gas and it won't add to the reservoir pressure it won't add to the reservoir pressure okay that is called the fill up time the fill up time so if we waited for the project maintenance project uh, the project of pressure maintenance to be applied uh, sometime after the initial development for our field, it won't be it won't be efficient. Also, for the distances between wells, we have a low viscosity. We have a low viscosity and also a higher compressibility. Okay, so the wells can can drain or produce from high distances, or the drainage radius from the wells will be some uh, high distance, some high distance. So we want, we don't want to drill, to drill much wells, because if we drilled much wells, much many wells, these wells will affect each other, which is called the interference effect, the interference effect. So if we drilled, if we drilled a number of wells, that are producing from the same drainage area. So this high number of wells will get the same recovery, but with higher cost because the successive drilling and also a lot of well problems like the free gas that will be separated because the flowing uh, pressure will be lower than the bubble point. For the gas condensate reservoir, we can expect that the dew point is the same, is the same, or at least at very near to the initial reservoir pressure. So we can expect that the condensate will be formed, will be formed into the reservoir. But we wanted to know the amount of the percent of the condensate that will be formed into the reservoir. This piece of information is provided by a test or a lab test. It's called constant volume depletion experiment. This, this test is simulating the depletion process from the gas condensate reservoir and also expect the percentage of the condensate that will be formed into the reservoir. So, if we wanted to recover this condensate, we should apply a project called gas recycling. The gas recycling project is that the gas produced, the gas produced in the surface coming to some 
type of services that that separate the condensate from it until be, until becoming a dry gas. Then dry this dry gas will be re-injected into the reservoir. So in the reservoir, this re-injected re-injected gas will vaporize will vaporize some of the condensate into the reservoir conditions. Then it will be reproduced from the reservoir carrying some of the condensate. Okay. Also, forming a condensate into the reservoir will cause some problems to the well production. Like a problem or a common problem into the gas, uh, gas condensate fields is called condensate blockage. Condensate blockage. Because in the area, because in the area into the near wheel bore region, the pressure is the least pressure. Because of the production, it will be equal to the flowing bottom hole pressure. So because this pressure is the lesser pressure or the least pressure into the reservoir, so the amount of condensate that will be formed, it will be maximum at that point. But we should memorize that we are producing from the same point, from the same point. So the gas, the gas or the condensate will block will block these pores and the well production will come to zero will come to zero the well will stop production which is called this problem gas uh, gas condensate blockage so to solve to solve this problem we can apply a mechanism called half and buff half and buff is just you are injecting some dry gas to vaporize this condensate and reproducing this gas again to the surface, recovering the condensate that caused the problem. One of the important aspects for the field development plan is designing the wheel lifting and the production facilities. We have several types for the artificial lifting from the wheels. When our wheels stop the naturally flowing, so we can design the artificial lifting method according to the properties for the wheel, reservoir, and the reservoir fluid. We have several types for the artificial lifting, like the sucker root pump or the hydraulic pump, the ESP, gas lift, and uh, all these uh, kinds of artificial lifting. So this to install any type of the artificial lift, you should consider also, you should consider also the reservoir fluid properties, like the gas oil ratio, the bubble point, and the fluid viscosity. For example, for the gas oil ratio, if we have, if we have a high gas oil ratio, we have high gas oil ratio. So in case you apply ESP, in case you apply ESP artificial lifting. So this high value or high volume of gas will be if, if, if your flowing pressure is decreased than the bubble point, so some free gas will get out of the oil. This free gas will can, can cause some problems like gas look, gas look into any kind of pumps, any kind of pumps like the ESP, PCP pump, and jeep pump. So, if you have, if you have a moderate, if you have a high gas oil ratio, so the recommended method for the artificial lifting is to uh, is to apply gas lift. Okay. Also, if you have a high a high viscosity. If you have a high viscosity, so the recommended method is to is to using the PCB pump, the PCB pump, or also the root pump. For high rates, you can you can use the ESP. Okay. So we talked about the wheel artificial lifting design. So 
Also for the production facilities, the production facilities, the design for the production facilities should also account to the PVT. Actually, it is mainly dependent on the PVT properties. Okay. It's a design for the capacity, for the separation stage. We wanted to know, we wanted to know how many stages for the separation it should be optimum from our field. It is enough. Is it enough to have just a tank or a separator and a tank or two separators and a tank or three separators and a tank? We wanted to know how many the separation stages should be applied for this special bar fluid. Also, what is the pressure and temperature for as operating conditions for these facilities? What is the optimum, the optimum pressure and temperature for the separator? So the optimum, the optimum, the optimum design for the production facilities. It's a goal to have, to have more oil and less gas, to have more oil and less gas. So why, why to have more oil? Why our goal to have more oil and less gas? Because the oil is more profitable than the gas. The oil is more profitable than the gas. So our goal, our goal, our target for the design for the production facilities is to have lower GOR or higher CGR in case of gas, uh, of gas reservoirs. To determine the optimum separating, uh, separating uh, separation stages, pressure, temperature, these operations can be simulated by the lab separator test experiment the lab separator test experiment. For example, we did this experiment for an oil. We, we tried, we tried three or uh, four, four conditions for separator, so for separation. We have, we have two stages of separation from 50 to zero, uh, from that oil to 50, then from 50 to zero or from the will to 100, then from 100 to zero, or from 200 to zero, or from 300 to zero, okay? Then we plotted, we plotted the EPI, the DOR, and the formation volume factor. So what is the optimum conditions? The optimum conditions should, should achieve maximum EPI, because we mentioned that the more EPI, the more price for the oil. Also, minimum GUR and the minimum formation volume factor. Why we wanted to minimize the gas oil ratio or minimize the oil formation volume factor? Because we want, we want as much as, as much as gas quantity should be dissolved into the gas, into the oil. We want to convert as much as much as we can gas quantity from the gas phase to the oil phase to have much, much more volume for the oil. The last aspect for the field development plan, it will be about the flu assurance, the flu assurance and the safety considerations. The flow assurance is a new term into the oil and gas, uh, the oil and gas uh, industry. Simply the, uh, for the flow assurance, it just, we want to be sure that the flowing conditions from the reservoir to the sale point is going at the best or the optimum conditions from pressure and temperature. Okay, because in some cases, in some cases, we can apply excessive bombing pressure and we can solve where, uh, uh, for example, for example, if we have a production line and we are using, we are using three 
pumps to pump oil into this production line. We wanted to study. We wanted to study. Is it better to have only two pumps and apply chemical injection to lower the viscosity in the oil into the pipeline? Or it is the it's best to have these three pumps. This kind of study is called flow assurance study. The flow assurance, as we mentioned in our example, is mainly dependent on the BVT properties, the composition, like the, the composition and the viscosity for the oil and gas. For example, if we have a gas reservoir, as we know, as we know, a problem coming when in case that we have a gas with water, a gas with water. In case we have a gas with water, we can have a problem called hydrate formation. Hydrate formation, some solids, which is a composition or a mixture from gas and water formed into the production lines. So for the flow assurance, we should, we want to make sure that the temperature for this production line should be above the temperature for formation of hydrate. Okay. This kind of calculation can be made into the PVT softwares like the PVTB or the PVT SIM uh, or the PVT I. We have like here the hydrate, the hydrate formation. We wanted to know the pressure and temperature when this hydrate to be formed into the production line. Also, also, we wanted to know, we wanted to know which inhibitor we can inject into this production pipeline to prevent the hydrate formation into this production line. Okay. Also, also for high EBI oils, for these volatile oils, these volatile oils can deposit some waxes and paraffins. Also for its production lines, we should, we want to make sure that the temperature of the production is higher than the wax appearance temperature. The wax appearance temperature. Also this temperature point is measured into the lab or can be calculated using the BVT software. For the low ABI, for the low EBI, this kind of oils can precipitate asphaltine, can precipitate asphaltine, but we wanted to know the location for the asphaltine deposition. Is it into the reservoir or into the area near will pour so we can make cyclic stimulation, cyclic stimulation like injection, some chemicals, that dissolve this asphaltine to recover the wheel productivity, or the asphaltine will deposit into the production tubing. So when, when we make the next work over, we can make cycling cleaning for the production tubing to enhance the production from the tubing, or we can, we can change this tubing, or the solution to just using some inhibitors that like asphaltine dispersant, uh, or asphaltine inhibitors, or the, or the solution is to change the pressure and temperature for the production facilities. So all these aspects are considered into a flow assurance study that is made into the lab by using a lab experiment or by using a BVT software and the equation of state modeling. For heavy oil, for heavy oil, Usually we apply the heating for the flu lines and insulating the flu lines. Why we are, we are making that? To keep the viscosity into low, into low values. And these low values will result into less pressure losses into the production lines. For the safety, for safety considerations, especially for carbonate reservoirs, 
especially carbonate reservoirs. Usually the carbonate reservoirs will produce oil and gases with a considerable percentage of H2S and CO2. H2S and CO2. So if we didn't care for the, two, the H2S or the CO2, so it will be a catastrophe for the personnel and also the equipment. So in the previous slides, we considered the aspect of the, the BVT aspects that we are considering into the field development plan. But what happens? What if we didn't consider the BVT aspects into the field development plan? We have some actual cases. We have some actual cases. But before going to the cases, we have a very important quote into reservoir engineering. School, if you considered all the design parameters except one parameter, you didn't consider it, be sure that this parameter will be your nightmare into the future. Because you didn't consider this parameter, it will, it will, can, it, it will cause some bad problems into the future. For a joke, for a joke, if we have this person that take all the considerations, it take all the possibilities, it uh, like for the field, we have, uh, we, do, we take the loans from the bank, so we, we made the reservoir simulation, we did the volumetric uh, calculations for the original oil in place, but we didn't consider the PVT. So what happened? <laughs> it is like that. The PVT will cause unexpected problem into your development for the plan. Okay. <laughs> so we have an actual case. We have an international company that discovered a large gas field into Egypt. Okay, that's good, congratulations. But the reservoir fluid interpreted as gas condensate. So we have a party, we have a party, we have a gas reservoir with a huge number of condensate and the condensate has high price and we can have a high deal of mine. So the company went to the construct the gas processing plant. Gas processing plant. As we know, the processing facilities will, will require a high deal of money. Actually, actually, it it uh, it cost about two billion dollars to construct this processing area for the interpreted gas condensate. When the company come back to the field, it discovered that it isn't a gas condensate reservoir, it is a volatile oil reservoir. So it isn't a gas reservoir, it is a volatile oil reservoir. So we don't have, we don't have the need for all these processing stations and all this money that we invested to construct these facilities. <laughs> so we have a catastrophe for this company and the company lost all this money. Also for another case that we're dealing with heavy oil, the company, company discovered a heavy oil, a heavy oil field. But the problem for this field that it is an offshore field. It is located into the marine. The company acquired some samples for the fluid and the lab experiments that we did for, that we are done for the viscosity indicated that we have a high viscosity. From as alphabetic, that high viscosity it means high pressure loss into the production line. The, 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 the initial pipeline design, the initial design for the production pipeline, 
recommended that we should have a large diameter production line or instead we can apply heating and insulating for this production by line but but unfortunately the company didn't follow the design for the production pipeline because they claimed that construction this high diameter pipeline will have a high cost and we don't do we don't we want to do that we don't uh, we don't want to have this deal of money so they insisted that to have a small diameter production pipeline. When it comes to production, and we have a party, we have a party of production, let's put the wheels into production. The pipeline couldn't handle the targeted production rate. Why? Because, because bombing this deal or the target production rate into this small production line will require a pressure, upstream pressure that is higher than the design pressure for this pipeline. And then the production or the project was running under its economic play. So from our session today, we have only just just one conclusion. Just listen to your reservoir PVT. So we come to the end and uh, any questions related to our today's session. Thank you, Engineer Mohammed. Thank you for your efforts and outstanding presentation. Uh, there are uh, some questions in the chat already. Everyone, if you have any questions, please uh, chat and comment so we can start answering them. Okay, first question. Which is more expensive, con condensate or oil? How much is the ratio of the price? Okay. We have, we have a rough estimate, a rough estimate that... 1 million of gas equal to about 165 barrel of oil. Okay, it is just a rough estimate, but to be accurate, we should compare between the heat content of the number of barrels that is equal to the heat content for 1 million of gas. Okay. Okay, thank you. Next question. Why GUR with time and the curve in wet gas are constant? Because the wet gas is still a single phase into the reservoir. So we don't have a separated gas or a separated condensate into the, the reservoir. So the amount of the ratio will be different. So because the wet gas, the wet gas, is only gas phase into the reservoir conditions. So the GOR will still constant into, uh, into all the period of production. Great, next question. Uh, when we are mathematical modeling for EOR, water alternating gas injection, the BVT is important to be calculated or not? Uh, please repeat the question. He's asking if when we are making mathematical modeling for EOR, uh, water for the alternating. EOR? Yes. Yes. Okay. Water alternating gas injection. Water alternating gas injection. Yeah. Uh, is the BVT important to be calculated? Yes, because we, we can, because we have uh, a solubility of water in gas, and we should consider it. Uh, I think we have an experiment called a swill test or a slim tube. This kind of experiments is, is necessary into modeling the UR aspects like the WAG or SAGD or any kind of this UR. 
you. Next question. Regarding condensate blockage, if we impress at the producer well, this can help to increase the pressure around the well. Can if we be what? considered as a solution for condensate blockage? If we what? If we inject gas at the producer well. Yes, yes, yes. It is a solution. It is it's called half and buff. Half and buff technique. It's just when you have uh, the condensate blockage, just re-inject some of the produced gas into the reservoir. It will vaporize this condensate and the will will recover its productivity. Okay, the next question. The one who was asking about okay, thank you. The one who was, who were asking about the comparison between condensate and oil uh, is saying he was asking about condensate and oil, not gas and oil. The difference in price. Yes, the condensate and oil. Okay, we mentioned that. We mentioned that. The EBI, the EBI is an important aspect into the pricing for oil or gas or, or condensate. The oil, the oil which the which has an EBI ranging from 40 to 45 is the most expensive liquid. Most expensive liquid. But the condensate usually has EBI more than 55. But the heating value of condensate, only the condensate won't, is not much as the heat content into this kind of oil that having EBI about 40 or 45, okay? But usually, usually, we are using this condensate to be mixed with low EBI oils to enhance its EBI, not just selling the condensate as condensate, but the companies are using the condensate to hire the EBI for the low EBI oils. Okay, thank you. Uh, someone is asking, please, is artificial is it artificial lift compulsory for all wells? And what happens if there is no artificial lift? No, no, it isn't a must. When you your will, you will. Uh, coming to a period that it is unable to continue natural flowing, in this case, you can apply the artificial lifting. But if you are, if your will is producing at a rate and you are satisfied with this rate, it is so, then no need to installing the artificial lifting. Okay, thank you. Which more? Which is more profit? For too little oil or too heat? Mr. Muhammad, are you are you with me? Uh, no, I think there is some issues into the internet. Okay, the question is. If uh, which is more profitable for uh, yep. economically, ah. too little oil or too heavy oil, and why? Too little. What is the meaning? I for too think uh, they mean or volatile. They mean they mean more volatile. volatile yeah, I yes, think the volatile, I think they mean that. The volatile will have the volatile will have a higher EBI, so it is more profitable than the heavy oil. Because also the baby, the heavy oil will require some uh, some applications like steam injection, higher uh, higher diameter for the production line that will add the, to the cost for the project. So I think the more the volatile oil is more profitable than the heavy oil. Okay, uh, someone is asking what is the best practice for reservoir fluid characterization. At the start of the new project, do you suggest to have many samples from different wells before design, uh, designing our facilities? Yeah, you should have several samples, then take the samples to the lab and make the routine studies. Then 
can then take the results for this uh, experiments and QC the results. Then after QC, you can enter the simulation to simulate the uh, executed, executed lab experiments. Then using the matching for this lab experiments, you can predict the experiments or any uh, any volumetric behavior that you want to calculate at any operating conditions. Okay, someone is asking if oil is heavy, it's very heavy, can it be considered economic? And why heavy waxes are not packed to be lighter? Because, because for the waxes question, the light oil have the light oils have more light components and, and the light components can deposit some waxes and paraffins. By logic, the waxes and paraffins have light, light color that's corresponding to the light components. But the heavy oil have more asphaltic components. So it's deposition, it's more likely to deposit asphaltine rather than waxes or paraffins. Okay, uh, how sampling is carried away? It's carried out. Okay, we, we uh, I think I think uh, we had a previous session called reservoir fluid sampling. You can revisit this video, but but we have two types of samples. We have the surface samples and bottom hole samples. Bottom hole samples carried by the logging tools like MDT or RDT. Uh, and the surface samples is carried by having a gas sample, then oil sample, then recombina recombination of the two samples from the separator. Okay, last uh, three questions, I guess. Uh, is there any universal formula for reservoir analysis as per different regions and zones? Uh, we have many correlations for the BVT that is the, the literature, but you should select you should select the appropriate uh, correlation before trusting its uh, results. Okay, and we have a way for selecting the correlations, and I think we will discuss this item into our course. Okay. Uh... The question before last, do we have a standard schedule to select an artificial lift for our reservoir, even if it's 90% dependent? Yes, uh, I think uh, I think the specialists for the petroleum technology have more knowledge for this aspect. But generally, we can use this uh, the, the table uh, for selecting the artificial lifting. Uh, this table uh, is considering only the BVT, but there are more than uh, more parameters than the BVT to be controlled the type of artificial lifting, like sand production, like water production, and the required rate, the, 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 the dissolved gases or the free gases, some other parameters. Okay, uh, someone is asking, uh, it's hard to get a uh, reservoir engineering job, since all companies are requiring years of experience, can you advise how, how <laughs> someone can start? It is a dilemma. <laughs> you want an experience to work until we want it to work to get experience. It is a dilemma. But, but uh, everyone should, have, should do what uh, is best to get a job. You can enhance your skills by attending some courses, uh, more reading, uh, you can message some professionals in the oil and gas industry and question them or ask them about it, uh, anything you want uh, to know. And uh, inshallah, it will be better, inshallah. Okay, uh, last two questions uh, so that we are not uh, prolonging any longer. Uh, does one design a flow line based on oil flow rate only, or both oil and water flow from a well? Several parameters. Several ones, like the characteristics for the oil, water, and gas, the ratio between the amount of them, the characteristics for the oil and gas, the gravity, the viscosity, all these parameters, 
uh, is entered into uh, the simulation process uh, and some softwares like HiSys or PipeSims or PipeSim. These softwares combine all these parameters to calculate the appropriate diameter for the production line. Our last question for today, which is bigger, oil mobility or water mobility during a high production rate? Uh, water, because the water has lower viscosity. Because the water has lower viscosity. So it will have a higher mobility. Okay, thank you so much, Engineer Muhammad. Thank, uh, you, thank you for your informative uh, presentation and knowledge today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'll send the feedback form link in the chat. So please make sure to uh, fill it so that we can get better every time. Uh, we are uh, hoping to see you in upcoming webinars and courses. Thank you very much. Uh, see you soon.